Welcome back, everybody. As we've mentioned, April is Adopt a Greyhound Month, and here with an organization that has been bringing awareness to this special breed for 25 years is Larissa. Yes, greyhounds so are important. wonderful. They, they are. are such beautiful animals. They're so regal and agile, yeah. and they just look royal. They do. And they are so well known for yep. racing. And you know, as the years go on, mm. they they are starting to change the laws with racing. And so okay. many thousands of greyhounds that have been bred as sight hounds because they're supposed to go after their prey by sight, they're now going to be needing to be rehomed. Right. So there are wonderful people and wonderful organizations like Nittany Greyhounds in Pennsylvania that are rehoming these retired dogs because they can only race for a few years before their bodies, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot on them. Sure. And they love uh, they love being active, but they then need to be rehomed. And so luckily there are wonderful organizations that are doing that and putting on huge events where people can learn about this great br breed. And you're shedding the light on that. Yeah, okay. it's Point. Right. It's a great yeah. point because, like you say, there's many out there looking for their forever homes yes. for sure. And joining us now from State College, Pennsylvania, is the president of Nittany Greyhounds, Tony Ducci. Welcome, Tony. There she is. Hi, Tony. Hi, everybody. Hi, thank Thanks you. For having me. Thank you for joining us. I, I know it must feel so great to see these dogs find their forever homes, especially since you, Tony, are involved from the very yeah. beginning. Yeah. You are there even before they leave the racetrack. How do you exactly help them find their loving homes? Well, it really is a process. Um, once they're finished with their racing career, um, we get a notice that there are dogs available. Or if we have applications open and we need dogs, I go to my contacts in Florida, Alabama, sometimes West Virginia, tell them that we have open applications and that we need dogs. Then we start working on a transport to get them here. So uh, it is a process and it involves a whole lot of people. So. But it's fun and it's very rewarding. Oh, you're doing a great job. Yeah. That's for sure. We see all the different ways that they're transported around. Is that the greyhounds in the back of that they're plane? They're so beautiful. Being held out. So beautiful. So beautiful. As Larissa every mentioned, go ahead. Go ahead, Tony, please. So every now and then we get to bring him up in a plane. Yeah. Not very often, but every once in a while we do charter. Okay, listen. You do what you have to. You do what you it's have to Whatever's do. necessary. And getting so thank the help, you for that. For sure. As Larissa mentioned, uh, the laws governing dog racing continue to change, but you have a really fun way to educate the public and potential adopters about greyhounds and greyhound adoption, don't you? Yes, we do. Uh, we have a lot of different ways, but one of, um, one of the things that we know is over the next year, or two years, there are going to be potentially thousands of greyhounds that need to go into homes as the racetracks close in Florida. They're going to be moving those dogs. So we're getting ready with our kennel, but we're also raising awareness. And one of the ways we do that is with our huge event that we do every year, which is a fundraiser for us. It's called Greyhounds in Gettysburg. Aww. We've Tell been doing that. it for 21 years, and um, it's about a thousand people and their greyhounds come to this event and just have fun, be social. It's not a dog show. This is a celebration of sight hounds. Oh, Look they're so that, beautiful. Tony. I know it. Oh, yeah. And they really do make such great pets. <laughs> and I don't think people realize that because they think of them as such racers and yeah. not those lazy pets that we've been talking about at the beginning of the show. And if people can't get out there to that event, how can people find more information no matter where they are? Well, certainly there are, if you go to Google and plug in Greyhound Adoption, you'll get probably 300 different groups that are available with dogs. For the most part, they're a little bit more scarce right now because of the changes going on. But um, Nittany Greyhounds in State College, obviously we have dogs, we have a kennel, so we have dogs available all the time, but a lot of groups do. So just doing a search will get you what you need to know. And Tony, just so people are aware, you know, yes, these dogs do race and, and they, they um, are known for being very agile and running, but like Larissa pointed out, they're also very chill. They sometimes <laughs> just like to chill on the couch and, you know, you don't, it doesn't have to be a high active home to have a dog like this, correct? No, I, we have a lot of greyhounds in apartments and I'm sure that you've heard this before, that they're 45 mile an hour couch potatoes. <laughs> they get <laughs> environment very seriously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. They need a little bit of exercise a couple of times a day, just like any other dog does. Sure. But they really do enjoy just hanging out with their people. 
Yeah, which is important. Tony, thank you so much uh, for being here with us, taking the time to be here Look with us them. today for sure. These are gorgeous photos, They're beautiful so animals, beautiful. and great thank awareness, everybody. And to learn more about Nittany Greyhounds, and in Greyhounds in Gettysburg, the event that we were just speaking about, visit Nittany, nittanygrays.org. Thank you so much, Tony. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Oh. Yes, Coming up on Home